Good. Okay. On time. Hello, welcome. My name is Daniel Salinas. I'm director of Lean Institute Chile. Um, welcome to this study case in the construction world. We know that the construction industry is far to be a repetitive process like manufacturing, but we have found that many of the same principle that comes from Toyota production system are also applicable in the world of construction from a standardization, 5S and visual management, pool system, daily management, and of course, problem solving. I'm very glad to introduce you to very good friends who have the generosity to show us their lean journey in one of the largest construction company in Chile. I live with you, Daniela Bertin and Maria Paz Mosqueira. Please, Daniela. Good evening. I'm Daniela Bertin, Submanager of Management, Control and Planning at Soco Constructora Socovesa Santiago. Through this presentation that the Lean Institute Chile has asked us, I'm going to tell about Empresa Socovesa and uh, about our beginning on this path toward improvement and our first beginning in this Lean philosophy. After some time of advising in what the result was the path improvement, we meet with the Institute and together we began to devise a way reinforced concept in the construction company teams. Um, Empresa Sucubesa, please the other. <laughs> Empresa Socovesa, to which Maria Paz and I work for, it's a multi-brand company with presence in the Chilean market for over 57 years. Um, in this open stock company traded a Chilean stock exchange. The company has revenue between 50 to 600 million with a gross margin 28 to 32% and more than uh, 6,000 employees across all these brands. Uh, there are three brands, Socovesa, Pilares and Almagro. Socovesa develops real estate projects of houses, building and subsidy houses. It is located in the metropolitan region and O'Higgins. Pilares, oh, Pilares develop high rise building only in the metropolitan region. This brand is only real estate and it's located in metropolitan region. Almagro develops high rise building only in the metropolitan region and Antofagasta. Socovesa Sur de develops the real estate project of houses, building and subsidy houses. It's located in from Maule to Magallanes region. Constructora Socovesa Santiago, to which I belong, builds to Socovesa Santiago and Pilares. Eh, Constructora Socovesa Santiago builds houses and buildings. The chart below shows the annual uh, natural evolution since 2018 until 2021. Uh, now we build more, we build more builds than houses. From this slide, I have called it the road to improvement since there have been years of a constant change to improve until we started the company in the lean philosophy, especially lean construction. In 2015, uh, we moved the Excel programs to project. Then in 2016, Soco Planet was born with the purpose to measure ourselves to cater data with its uh, platform continues to be used. In 2017, we began a consultancy with the LED Consulting, a Brazilian company, and the innovation area, the Socovesa, 
the transformation begins in two pilot works. Nowadays, in 2021, we have all the work in some state of implementation. 15 works per a year on average in execution. In short, in from 2015 to 2021, uh, we standardized the planning process. We uploaded the process to an online platform. This report shows the development of the work as visual management, where we can see the progress according to status. The color blue shows what is planned or to do. Uh, the red color for what should have started and didn't start. Yellow, what they has not reached the 100% and green, what is 100% finished. This activity shown in the report is completion painting of the Joaquin Martinez building and the physical progress. Up next, the same report is shown, but this time is houses. Uh, as the first tool, we use the last planner system. In this sheet taken from the literature, we can see our review process each project. Today, we are working on PSP process production system planning to achieve the master plan plotted in a lob. The line of balance is a tool project planning and the control that provide great visibility for the flow of work in the construction sites. The lob depicts information related to when, where, and what activities are done at any time as well as activity batch size, pace, and the buffer between different crews. Regarding intermediate planning, our horizon 12 weeks, it's possible. From the weekly planning, it's hello activity is a free from all restriction. Uh, in the it's what's done, there are already three years of analysis results. This slide shows a photo of the PSP process with the construction teams. This process is designed in 12 meetings and in a period of two months. Right. Right. Uh, meeting and teamwork help make better tools. This slide, this slide uh, shows the visual management on board meeting. In 2019, have this, uh, in 2019, after having made the progress in implementation of lead construction, we wanted to deepen in new tools and support the implementation that we carried out together the Lean Chile Institute. We needed to deepen the root cause analysis, definitely to solve the problem that continue to appear from the construction site to site. We asked it the institute to deepen concept and together devise it an alternative to get to them. Thus, we began with the implementation of the A3 process. We choose the pilot project and the team made up the professional chosen from the different project and pilot project manager. We begin by deepening concept with the team training. Then we continue to understand the situation of the pilot work. We went to Yemba. The first semester of 2020, we made the first presentation to management. We continue with the second round of A3, A3 and we close with the presentation for later. The team for solving problem with A3 process was made 12 people for the different work and positions.
the pilot was chosen because it was uh, the work that the best had tools implemented. That is the pilot Vicuña Maquena. This is the development work. Um, uh, the same that uh, previous slides. Uh, now Maria Paz is going to show the work we did the Lean Institute Chile. Good evening. I am Maria Paz Mosqueira, head of Socovesa Construction Planning, and I am going to introduce you the development of an A3 that we have been working with the support of the Lean Institute Chile between 2019 and 2020. The title of our A3 is Furniture Just in Time, and we wanted to address the issue of furniture activity since in all, almost all Socovesa buildings, the dispatch and installation of those always presents a delay, and it is very complex because it's a part of the critical path of work. So we saw an opportunity of improvement. So first of all, in context, um, we were working on a building called Midjans, which had two towers, A and B, but we focus on tower A since that was the one that is delivered first and also already had the installation activity of furniture in progress. So when we went to Gemba and made the measurements, we were able to quantify that the delay in the activity was four and a half weeks which directly affected the following activities such as furniture covers, vinyl flooring, and later the delivery of the apartment to the final client. Regarding the current situation, we have in our master program that weekly we needed the dispatch and installation of eight apartments per week so that the work is pulled and not pushed. But we have th three situations generated. First, there is no certainty or a program between the building and the contractor regarding the dispatch of the furniture. So as we can see in this table, that they are asked for eight apartments per week, but the contractor spends six weeks without delivering anything, then completes two entirely floors, and then the following week there is nothing, and then two more floors, so there is no certainty of when or what time will the furniture arrive. The second situation is that the, 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 the distribution of furniture to the apartment is inefficient because when the furniture arrive at the construction, it comes with a driver's assistance who are in charge of the distribution of the furniture. The problem is that as there is no certainty on at what time and which day the furniture will arrive, so when the furniture arrives, probably the forklift is being used and the, for, and the furniture cannot be lifted to the building. So it is left stuck somewhere. And then there is, when there's availability of the forklift, the furniture is lifted as quickly as possible. And all the furniture is left together in one apartment without distributing to the corresponding apartments. This also happens additionally uh, because when the furniture arrives, it doesn't come with a label that indicates which apartment goes to, so the distribution becomes more difficult. From this, we have our value flow map, where we have the, in the picture where the furniture arrives in the morning and can be immediately uploaded to the building, or with waiting times collected below and delayed to reach its destination where it, where it has to be installed. The third, the third situation is closely related to the previous one, since we have a lack of the contractor workforce, and this occurs mainly because when the furniture is left stopped on the first floor in the afternoon, it's the same workforce that installs that the one that distributes next day. So they have to go down to look for the furniture and move it. Or the other thing that happened is that the worker has to go down one or two floors to go and, fi and find a furniture that must be installed in, an in the apartment that he's working. So in the next slide, we can see how the material is stored in the apartment 
Once it is unloaded from the forklift, it has no logical order, no labels, along with other materials, and you can even walk into this room. In the next, next picture, um, we see the furniture is stuck on top of one another, which can also damage delicate chipboard covers. And we have another situation that happens as sometimes the painters use the furniture as platforms to paint the ceilings, which endangers the furniture and is prone to accidents. So based on a good understanding of the problem and interviews with people involved, such as workers, foremen, supervisors, and constructors, we have the following goals. The first consists of reducing the, pro the projection of the current delay from four and a half weeks to a maximum of one week by March 2nd. This de deadline was established since the activity per program has to end in May, so it left us a margin of error to react in case the measures didn't work. And the second goal we set for ourselves is that the contractor meet the dispatch of furniture from the ninth floor according to the intermediate planning that would be 10 apartments dispatched and installed weekly. However, we left this goal cross out because it is something that was not in our work of action. And for the analysis of why the problem exists, we brainstorm ideas with a team of different people, which we capture in this Ishikawa diagram. As you can see, here are the problems that we prioritized and classified into three categories. The problems that we identified were separated into three categories, which was logistics, supplier, and planning. Of those problems identified, we made a selection of those that were more influential and were within our circle of action, and we made an analysis of five whys, concluding that the problems with the same categories had the same root cause. Regarding the first category, which is logistic, we found three countermeasures. We evaluated each of these countermeasures according to a stress impact table, where those that correspond to a high impact with low effort were those that would be done immediately. Those with low impact and low effort were to be left for, an, for evaluation. And finally, those with a high effort and low impact were going to be discarded. Our first countermeasure was to allocate a team of temporary workers to move furniture that covers problem one and two previously discussed where the purpose was to generate a team to supply the workload of the driver's assistant that the contractor had. The second countermeasure is to generate a pokayoke of the furniture. It's the countermeasure to problem number three in order to identify to which floor and apartment each piece of furniture has to be dispatched. Since as I mentioned above, there were errors in the transfer of this because they were not labeled. The third countermeasure is a detailed planning of the transfer of the furniture, which solves problem number four, and which refers to a planning that considers one floor per week, establishes internal warehouses in the building to collect the stock of material. The purpose of this countermeasure was to establish a standard within the work of collection, transfer, and distribution of the same furniture. The fourth countermeasure is focused on the supplier category, where the first correspond to a coordination meeting with the contractor in which it's proposed that the furniture dispatches should be carried out on the first shift of the day in order to reduce waiting time to use the forklift, as well as to reduce the variability of shipments. The, the fifth countermeasure that tackles problem seven about planning was the measurement of installation where a gemba was required. The benefit of this countermeasure was to make a leveling of the workforce related to each worker and the difficulty of the apartment due to the amount of furniture to be installed. This countermeasure was discarded since it required a high effort and low impact in solving the problem. And finally, the last countermeasure was to do a weekly furniture manufacturing and dispatch planning Manufacturing had to come two weeks ahead of the current week and the dispatch one week earlier in order to have a certainty in planning. 
Then analyzing on how each of these countermeasures can be put in action, we created a plan where the activities are indicated with a start date, control date, and end date, with assigned managers, reviewers of those responsibles, and traffic light that will indicate us the status. Regarding the controls, each of the activities had different control signs according to their criticality. For example, the team of the temporary workers was every two weeks since the contractor dispatched furniture every two weeks. Generating the pokayoke was one-time task. However, a monthly check was enough to be sure that this was being fulfilled. And finally, the planning of furniture, manufacturing, and the dispatch is done on a weekly basis. It should be noted that the building is already finished, so all traffic lights are green now. Regarding the follow-up, our way of verifying if our countermeasures were being effective, we made a graph where you can see the maximum delay that could be had, one week that was our goal, and the total number of weeks of delay that the activity had through the weeks. For example, before the implementation of the countermeasures, there was an approximate delay of five and a half weeks, and after applying the countermeasures, it was possible to, re to reduce it ending the activity only two weeks late. In this picture, we can see the label agreed with the local people in such a way to leave the furniture in order easy to find and prevented it from deteriorating. And in this slide, we can see the planning chart that was carried with the subcontractor to improve coordination and compliance with the delivery dates. And as a conclusion, I wanted to share with you that for us, this learning cycle opened our eyes to continue looking for the root causes of our problems and also left us very motivated to continue developing the capabilities of our collaborators and spreading the learning. Now, Daniela is going to talk about our next steps as a company with the Lean Institute Chile. I speak. Before the pandemic, we had our second part of the work with the Institute ready. And due to the crisis suffered in the country, we had postponed it. But we hope to restart 2022. The idea is to create a new teams of the 12 people to work now in BSM and 12 participants of the previous on will be sponsor of the group of developing different A3s that will be presented to us and monitor the work. The idea of these new stages is go out to look for waste. El conocimiento de cómo poder solucionar un problema en, en varios pasos, ¿cierto? Sin tener que estar eh, haciendo soluciones de cada parte. En el futuro hemos podido abordar estos problemas, analizarlos seriamente, nos han acompañado, nos han dado ejemplos de temáticas de otros rubros, no solo de construcción. Yo siento, la verdadera forma es que se hace una de eh, estar en el tema, ir a medir, si no sabes algo, ir de nuevo a terreno, volver a medirlo. Eh, eso era algo que nosotros no habíamos hecho antes. Ha sido un proceso bueno, ha sido un proceso de, de aprendizaje. Creo que es un método para aprender a pensar ¿no? y generar líderes. Siempre he pensado que, que todo lo que estamos haciendo es porque eh, después nosotros tenemos que culturizar a la gente que trabaja con nosotros. Okay, very good. So uh, we have a few minutes for a couple of questions. So uh, here we have a, a question for uh, Maria Paz. Uh, what was the most difficult thing in the development of the A3? And how long does it take to make a good A3 uh, from your experience? Mm, I think what it cost us the most was to recognize our problems. No one wants to share what we're doing wrong. 
and socialize them and make them trans transparent. And to seek the improvement in process and not the responsibles. And what, what was the second one? No, the, what about the how long that it take to make a good A3? Uh, I think whatever it takes, whatever it takes to be mature. Um, you need to understand the problem. You need to realize that it's a process that cannot be rushed. And you have to do a lot of things like socialize it, go to, go to Gemba. And once the A3 is written, it's not finished yet. It's just beginning. You have to always have, you always have to be improving the A3. Perfect. Thank you, Maria Paz. And a question for Daniela. What are the main difficulties that Socovesa has had in this uh, learn journey? The main difficult. The, the main barrier of Socovesa Lean trip is a culture. I could uh, a well-known phrase in construction, which is, you have not even built the house of the dog. What it means that uh, they do not validate you if you are inside the world. Therefore, it is more difficult to come to outside, try to help improve process. Another difficult is breaking routine and these people are very used to doing it the same way because they have always done it like that. The lean journey for us has been like learning to brush our teeth again in our uh, 50 years. <laughs> and, and on the other hand, the firefighter are always the heroes and are used doing what analyzing or thinking about the cause. Yeah, that's true. In the construction, everything always happens very fast. So you don't have uh, enough time to analyze, to go for the, the cause of the problem. Yeah, thank you, Daniela. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm always caught my attention how the companies that implement Lean are always very open to share the experience in a very transparent way, contributing from their value experience to the diffusion of the lean thinking. Uh, we are very grateful to Daniela and Maria Paz for this uh, excellent presentation, and es especially for the openness of they have had in sharing with us the learning and reflection of the, this very exciting lean journey. Thank you very much, both. Bye-bye. Thank you.